Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Adnan Rashid, your brother, back with another video on the topic of the Quran. Does the Quran endorse the Bible is the question I'm going to address today. And hopefully I will be going through some points to clarify this particular question. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? Firstly, let me highlight as to why the Christian missionaries have lately used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine, if someone came to me and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not, do you expect me to say the Bible is corrupt or the Bible confirms the Quran? Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran. Therefore, the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No. I would pick up works of scholars and I would explain as to why the Quran is not corrupt. And that question will be addressed in another video hopefully in the future. So that line of defense to use the Quran to defend the Bible is not working on Christians and Muslims. Lately, Christian missionaries have been using the Quran to defend the Bible. Now it is clear that the Bible is corrupt. All scholars of textual studies, those who have studied the text of the New Testament as well as the Old Testament have confirmed that the Bible is corrupt beyond repair. We do not know what the original authors once upon a time wrote. We have no idea as to what Matthew, Mark, Luke and John might have written originally, let alone what God might have inspired if he ever inspired them. So this line of defense is not working. So nowadays, Christian missionaries, when it comes to that question, whether the Bible is corrupt or not, they go straight to the Quran and they say, no, the Quran confirms the Bible, so the Bible cannot be corrupt. This line of defense is not working. And why are they using this reasoning? This reasoning is being used to simply deceive people, to simply give this impression that somehow the Muslims cannot believe in this. But the Quran is very categorical on that question that the Bible is corrupt. The current Bible in the hands of the Christians and the Jewish people is not pure. These are not the words of God revealed to Moses and Jesus, the Quran is very clear and categorical on that. And there are some set of verses which I will be putting in front of you in this regard. Also, Christian missionaries have been using another strategy to defend the Bible. And that is by mocking Islam, mocking the Muslims, mocking the Prophet of Islam. This strategy is also not working because the Bible still remains corrupt. This is not a defense of the Bible. By mocking Islam and the Prophet of Islam or the religion of Islam, the Bible is not suddenly going to become uncorrupted. So this is a very important point I wanted to raise. Mockery, mockumentaries, okay, uh, laughing and joking and sarcasm is not going to take away our arguments and our belief. We will continue to love Islam and our Prophet as we always did. And it is a condition of faith for the Muslims to love our Prophet. Now, when Christian missionaries want to take the message of the gospel, the loving message of the gospel to the Muslims, how do you love someone by insulting someone they love? Imagine if I came to Christian missionaries and the first thing I said, your mother is X, Y and Z. Would they listen to me? Would they give me a willing ear? Will they ever listen to what I have to say about God Almighty and the love I would be claiming for them? They would never listen to me. So you do not take the message of love to someone by hating on people they love. So this is a very important point I wanted to highlight very quickly in the beginning. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? This is a very good question and the Quran answers this question in different verses. There are four set of verses. Now what are these four points the Quran substantiates within its text? Point A, confirmation of the previous revelations given to previous prophets. Point B, the corruption of the previous scriptures. In other words, the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are corrupt. Point C, there are remnants of the previous scriptures in the literature around the world today. So we can still find the remnants of the previous scriptures, the original revelations, not the corruptions. The original revelations have survived in remnants in literature around the world for example, there are remnants in the New Testament as well as some of the remnants can be found in 
the apocryphal literature which the Christians rejected in the first three centuries. D, point D, the Quran is the guardian over previous scriptures. So the question is, if the previous scriptures are 100% preserved and we have exactly what was revealed upon Moses and no scholar will ever claim that by the way. No scholar of Christianity or Judaism will ever claim that we have the original revelations of Moses or Jesus. So the Quran stands as a guardian. So what are these verses? Very quickly I will cover some of these verses. On point A, the Quran confirming the previous scriptures, we have chapter 2 verse 136 where God mentions the original revelations of prophets like Abraham, Ishmael, Jacob and then the tribe of Israel, revelations that came to them and then Moses and Jesus. So in this verse, how do I know the Quran is talking about the original revelations? Once upon a time, the original revelations. How do I know that? Because when we look at the names of the prophets, we do not have their revelations with us today. Where is the revelation of Abraham? Where is the revelation of Ishmael? Where is the revelation of Jacob? Where are the revelations of the tribes? Where is the original revelation of Moses? Where is the original revelation of Jesus? Jesus only preached one gospel. He did not preach four gospels. Did Jesus, Jesus was not preaching from the gospel of John, from the gospel of Mark, or from the gospel of Luke, or from the gospel of uh, um, Matthew. And we will go further. Jesus was not preaching from the gospel of Thomas. He was not preaching from the gospel of Mary Magdalene. He was not preaching from other gospels that were attributed to other authors within the first three centuries of Christianity. Jesus only preached one gospel. The question is, where is that gospel? Christian missionaries continue to disingenuously use the word gospel, trying to insinuate that gospel actually means the four gospels. No. The word gospel in the Quran does not mean the four gospels. The word gospel in the Quran means one gospel and that was the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is an article of faith for us to believe in it. We have six articles of faith and one of them is to believe in the previous scriptures, the original scriptures, the original revelations that were revealed upon the previous prophets. So this is the first verse or the first point I wanted to cover from the Quran, whether the Quran confirms uh, the Bible or the veracity of the Bible or whether the Quran endorses the Bible. So it is clear now when the Quran talks about revelations in chapter 2 verse 136 it's talking about the original revelations of those prophets. Okay, Some of them have been lost, others have remained in remnants and we will see what comes uh, next. The second point is the Quran clearly confirms the corruption of the scriptures of the, uh, of the, of the Jews and Christians. Okay, and that can be seen in chapter 2, verse 79. So chapter 2, verse 79 clearly states that woe be unto those who have written book, who have, who have written the book with their own hands, and then they say this book is from God. Woe be unto what they write, woe be unto what they earn, because they are earning from it. So they did they did it for worldly gains. For whatever reason why they did it, they did it for earning something. Right? So the Quran is very, very clear that the scripture of the Jews and Christians are corrupt. And even Christian missionaries have admitted that this verse may be talking about a group of Jews who had corrupted the scripture, the Jewish scripture. Of course, because there was only one group dedicated to this task, to writing the scripture. Not all the Jewish people were writing the scripture. There were special scribes writing the scriptures of the Jews, special scribes. So it was a small group of people who were writing the scriptures. So the Quran is definitely talking about them, those who were adding into the words of God and then they claimed that these words are from God. So this is the second point in the Quran that the Quran addresses when it comes to the question of endorsing the Bible. Clearly the Quran, according to this verse, does not endorse the Bible. And how do we know that? We know that by the opinions of the companions of the Prophet on this particular verse. We have Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who categorically stated by quoting this verse that how can you go to Jews and Christians when you have the pure word of God in your hands, the Quran, 
while their books have been corrupted, while their books have been changed. This was said by Abdullah bin Abbas, the very cousin of the Prophet who took the Quran directly from the Prophet. This was his understanding of this particular verse. And you can see the hadith on the screen. It's there. So this is what we were taught about the scriptures of the Jews and Christians, that they have been corrupt and the Quran is categorical. Point C, the third point in this regard is that the Quran also confirms that even though the scriptures of the, of the Jews and Christians have been corrupted, there are remnants within literature around the world. There are remnants of the original revelations that were given to the prophets around the world. And these remnants can be found in uh, the Old Testament. These remnants can be found in the New Testament. For example, the words of Jesus uh, may have survived. The original words, of course, didn't survive because Jesus spoke Aramaic and the Gospels were written later on in the Greek language. Jesus did not speak Greek. So the meanings of the words of Jesus Christ have survived in some shape or form in uh, the literature that's extant, to, uh, that's extant today. For example, the New Testament and some apoc apocryphal Gospels, right? Got, uh, the, the canonical Gospels, the Gospels in the New Testament, do not tell us that Jesus spoke from the cradle, but an apocryphal Gospel tells us that, a Gospel that the Christians do not accept today. Then the story of Jesus making birds of clay and putting life through them, okay, by the will of God, that particular incident is not mentioned in the four Gospels. It can be found in an apocryphal Gospel. So we are saying, or the Quran is saying, the remnants can be found in literature around the world. So that was the third point the Quran makes in this regard. Point D. The fourth point is that the Quran is the guardian over the previous scriptures. Why do you need a guardian if the previous scriptures are fully 100% immaculately preserved? They are not preserved. That's why the Quran is the guardian. The Arabic word is muhaymin. Muhaymin means a guardian, a corrector, right? A supervisor. Okay, so the Quran supervises the previous scriptures in confirming what was actually revealed upon Moses and what was actually revealed upon Jesus. So this point is very, very important. Now, having given you these set of verses, Four points the Quran makes very clearly. To repeat, to summarize very quickly, point number one is that the Quran affirms belief in the original revelations upon prophets. Number two, the Quran clearly confirms the corruption of the scripture of the Jews and Christians, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. The Old Testament in chapter 2, verse 79 of the Quran, there's a verse there that clearly indicates that, that clearly uh, states that the scriptures have been corrupted and for the new testament we have chapter we have chapter 4 verse 157 where the doctrine of the crucifixion is denied categorically right that means the four gospels are corrupt they have this information on the crucifixion which is not true which is not correct so the quran is categorical about that another indication of the corruption of the new testament is in chapter 5 verse 47 which the christian missionaries very conveniently use to argue that the gospel of jesus christ is in the four gospels okay they claim that the four gospels are the gospel of jesus christ even though they are in conflict on many matters the four gospels contradict each other on many many issues even that is even though that's the case the christian missionaries argue that the gospel of jesus basically is the four Gospels, okay, which doesn't make sense to any sane person. But they use chapter 5, verse 47, in order to substantiate the four Gospels. And what is that verse? Let us read it. Chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 47. Let the people of the Gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by what God has revealed, then they are the wrongdoers. Okay, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ They are the sinners. So they use this particular verse, the Christian missionaries, to argue that, look here, the Christians are being told to judge by the Gospels. But no, if you look carefully, the Quran makes two very important points in this verse. And what are those important points? The Quran says, let the people of the gospel, 
not gospels, not plural, one gospel. Which gospel? The gospel that was revealed upon Jesus. Because the verse before, chapter 5, verse 46, clarifies who the gospel was given to. If you go to verse 46, it clearly states that the gospel, one gospel, one message was given to Jesus Christ. So therefore, the people of the gospel, you must judge by what God has revealed therein. So now, what is God telling us? What God has revealed therein? Why this important caveat? This caveat because there may be information which was not revealed by God. Therefore, the people of gospel judge by what God has revealed therein. Bima anzalallahu fihi. These are the Arabic words in the verse of the Quran. Bima anzalallahu fihi. By what God has revealed therein. It is a very important caveat which Christian missionaries deliberately ignore and they pass through it conveniently without mentioning it. So there is a very important caveat. You the people of the gospel, whoever you are, if you claim to be the people of the original gospel of Jesus Christ, then judge by it. Okay? How do you judge by it now is the question. A confusion may arise that how do we judge by it if we don't have it? If we don't have the now the Quran confirms that there are remnants of that gospel in your hands, whatever you have scattered all over the Christian world or in Christian libraries from the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth century onwards, whatever you have in literature, there are remnants. And how do we know these remnants are the remnants of the original gospel of Jesus Christ? We know that by looking at the Quran, because in the very next verse, Verse number 48 of chapter 5. The Quran categorically states, We sent the scripture in truth. The Quran, by the way. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ O oh, Muhammad, we have sent down a book upon you. بالحق, okay, With truth. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ and, we, and this book confirms what went before you. What went before you of the scripture, in other words, the previous scriptures. This book confirms what went before you. Okay, what does it confirm? Mohaiminan. So this book is actually a guardian over the previous scriptures. It is a guardian over the previous scriptures. In other words, that's why Fahkum Bainahum Bima Anzal Allah. Therefore, O Muhammad, you judge by what God has revealed upon you. So, if you read these verses in context, what God is telling us in these verses and telling the Christians and the Jews is that God revealed the Torah upon Moses and the Jews have some parts of it. Okay? Judge by it. Whatever God has revealed and whatever, whatever has survived, judge by it. Okay? We reveal the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? Judge by whatever has remained of it. One may question as to what God is talking about in chapter 5 verse 47 when he tells the people of the gospel to judge by what God has revealed therein. A Muslim commentator, Ibn Kathir, states that God is telling the people of the gospel to judge by what he has revealed therein by looking at those passages that are confirmed by God. For example, the Quran tells us that the Jews and the Christians find Prophet Muhammad mentioned with them in the scripture. This is clearly stated in chapter 7 of the Quran, verse, 100 and, uh, verse 157. It is clearly stated that people of the scripture, the Jews and Christians, can find Muhammad mentioned with them in the Torah and in the Torah. They find him mentioned They find him mentioned with them in the Torah and the the gospel. So here it is clear that when God tells the people of the gospel to judge by what he has revealed therein with that important caveat, he's talking about the passages that have been confirmed by the Quran as true revelations to Jesus and Moses. So it is very clear that chapter 5 verse 47 is talking about those passages. It is telling the people of the gospel okay, uh, to go and judge by those passages that have actually been revealed by God, such as the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29. The Quran conf confirms that passage uh, to be accurate, okay, because Quran alludes to it. 
such as passages like uh, John chapter 17 verse 3 where Jesus says the Father is the only true God and the Quran confirms that in many places such as the passages for example when Allah condemns in the Quran the doctrine of the Trinity and Jesus confirms the monotheism he himself up upheld. Jesus worshipped a God. He told Mary Magdalene in the Gospel of John that I ascend on to my father and to your father to my God and to your God. Jesus has a, had a God. So all these passages are confirmed in the Quran and these are the passages God, Allah, wants the Christians and the Jews to look at in their scriptures that have been confirmed as correct, true, original revelations sent upon Jesus and Moses. So these are the true revelations God is talking about in these passages. So in other words, God Almighty is telling the Jews and Christians to follow Islam follow the Quran. This is what he's telling them, that you have no choice now, you have no choice but to follow the Quran. So if you were true followers of the original Torah of Moses and the original gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, then you would be eventually following Islam. You would follow Islam because the Quran confirms all the important messages that were brought by Moses and Jesus. So this is very, very clear from these verses that the Quran Okay, the accumulation of the messages starting from chapter 5 verse 43 when the Quran talks about the previous scripture and makes, it way, ma makes its way all the way up to verse 49. There are six verses on this matter. Okay, and the accumulation is the Quran. So therefore, the Jews and the Christians have no option but to follow the Quran because their scriptures have been corrupted. And the Quran has come down as a guardian to confirm what is true in the scriptures and what is not Therefore, follow the Quran. This is why the Prophet of Islam advised the believers to make the final point to not accept everything Jews and Christians might give you from their scriptures and not to reject everything they give you from their scriptures. Because if you reject something true, which may be true, then you are sinning. And if you accept something which is not true, then in that case you may be sinning again. So do not reject and do not accept your guardian or your uh, confirmation of the truth in the scriptures is this book, the Quran. The Quran. So I hope it was very, very clear for those who have been confused by the rhetoric of Christian missionaries using the Quran disingenuously to defend the Bible or the veracity of the current Bible. It is clear that the current Bible is corrupt. Beyond repair, we do not have the original writings of the prophets. Okay, whatever remnants we have of the original revelations are confirmed by this pure revelation of God. This book is not corrupt, it is not changed, and I will be doing another video on that particular topic. Is the Quran corrupt? Until then, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you so much for listening.